want to know more about ancient history, human evolution, ancient structures, archaeological discoveries, then don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Click that bell icon if you want to be notified whenever I upload. And think about maybe supporting me on Patreon or becoming a channel member. One of our ancestors in the line of human evolution, known as Homo erectus, reigned for a really, really long time. Approximately 1.8 million years, to be exact. They were the ones that had many firsts in our evolutionary line. Um, they are, for instance, credited to be the first humans that mastered the use of fire, certain tools that they've created, and even basic construction. My name is Kaylee. And yes, today I'm going to tell you everything there is to know about Homo erectus, our human ancestor. Homo erectus, the upright man who's also known as Homo ergaster, although this was most likely one of the subspecies or lineages of Homo erectus that I will cover in a future video. Just not this one. <laughs> So first, let's take a look into where and when the first fossilized bones were found that led to the discovery of Homo erectus. So Eugene Dubois, a Dutch surgeon, has been credited with discovering the very first remains of a Homo erectus individual. This happened in Indonesia in the then still Dutch East Indies in 1891. A few years later, he named the species Pithecanthropus erectus, which means erect ape men, or upright ape men, if you will. Because, yeah, let's not say that other word too much when we don't need to. So, <laughs> that I will use the other word. That's a bit funny, a little less. Pithecanthropus erectus at that time was the most primitive and had the smallest brain of all known early human species. And do note that at this point in time, there had not yet been any early human fossils discovered in the entirety of Africa. So at this time, it was believed that humans originated in Asia and not in Africa. As time went by, Pithecanthropus erectus was placed in the Homo genus and from then on has been known as Homo erectus. I mean, Homo erectus. <laughs> As you can imagine, there are stone tools that slightly predate the Homo erectus fossils in Africa and China and Indonesia. And this is a common occurrence, actually. We often find tools that are older and younger than the fossils of a specific species or culture. And this is because their tools are often much better preserved and therefore easier to discover. While in many locations of the world, bones disintegrate and could possibly have not left a trace at all lost forever. So where did Homo erectus come from and from which time are these earliest fossils? I mean, I'm hearing you question this, so let me answer it. The oldest current known fossil of Homo erectus, Homo... The oldest current known fossil of Homo erectus was found in East Turkana in Kenya and date from approximately 1.9 million years ago. That's a long, long time. <laughs> so Homo erectus is credited as the longest living of all human species, although there are researchers that believe that Homo erectus had many different subspecies, but these could have been lineages that became more distinct over time, still falling into the Homo erectus lineage. So yeah, there's a little bit of a question around that, but there is some debate about this. And for me, it is not clear to make this into a precise statement. So for the most part of this video, I will just refer to all these lineages as Homo erectus and only talk about possible subspecies or distinct lineages in a future video where I will tell you about the different names and where they were found and where they spread to because for this one it's just too much. So the current latest data from all hominins before Homo erectus shows that they all lived in Africa before Homo erectus evolved. But the strange thing is that almost as soon as Homo erectus appeared in our current fossil record, it nearly immediately expanded out of Africa into Western Asia and traveled onward to East Asia and Indonesia in quite a short time frame. One of the findings that proved this was the discoveries at the Manisi in Georgia, which is a country in Western Asia. 
with this particular Georgia, I do not mean the state of Georgia in North America, but I really do mean the country of Georgia in Western Asia. <laughs> These fossils that were discovered in Georgia date from approximately 1.8 million years ago. This is only about 100,000 years, give or take, after their first emergence in Africa. Then, at the Shangcheng site in Lanshan, central China, they discovered Yanmu Men, which were the fossilized remains of China's oldest Homo erectus dating from approximately 1.7 million years ago. So that's only 200,000 years after their first emergence in Africa. And then there is the discovery of the fossil known as Sangiran II, which is an upper cranium of a Homo erectus found in Sangiran on the island of Java in Indonesia. And this particular fossil is between 1.6 million years and 700,000 years ago. So, give or take. There are more fossils that were discovered on the island of Java in Indonesia from around 1.49 million years ago. So there's more than enough reason to believe that Homo erectus, within 500,000 years of its first emergence in Africa, spread all the way into Indonesia. That's insane. Slowly expanding their habitat, and it is possible that this is the reason for the supposed subspecies or different distinct lineages as they spread into such a large area that over time they evolved slightly different and eventually creating distinct differences. Their habitat really spread far and wide, as fossils have been discovered in South Africa, Kenya, Spain, Georgia, China and the island of Java in Indonesia. So now that we know where Homo erectus came from, where the fossils have been discovered, and in which time they lived, we can look into their general appearance, because we do like to know what they sort of looked like. At least I would like to know. I think you too. So as I said earlier, there are regional differences that over time may have attributed to distinct differences in appearance of Homo erectus living on different parts of the planet. And of course, as you can imagine, the earlier fossils will look far more primitive in nature than the, for instance, later fossils, because a species evolves over time, especially when they've lived for 1.8 million years. They did evolve quite a bit over time. So let's start with the appearance of the skull. Homo erectus had a more flat face than the hominins that came before it. They had a pronounced brow ridge and the skull was quite flat. From the fossil record we learned that Homo erectus was most likely the very first hominin to have a projecting nose, where the earlier hominins before Homo erectus like Homo habilis most likely still had a flat nose, which was more ape-like. So I would like to quickly note that the sizes of the Homo erectus fossils differ quite a bit actually and some fossils are really small and others are actually quite large and this is also evident in the skulls and their average brain size. It does correlate. <laughs> The brain size varies from between 546 to 1261 cubic centimeters, which is a larger difference than we see in modern humans, actually. So like I just mentioned, Homo erectus varies quite a bit when it comes to size. The smallest fossils have been measured to be approximately 146 centimeters, uh, in height and they weigh around 40 kilograms and the larger fossils actually are measured to be around 185 centimeters in height and would weigh around 68 kilograms which if I may note if I make may say this is really lean for the largest homo erectus bodies like no body fat lean leaner than me it seems like there isn't much of a size difference between males and females, just like we see in modern humans, where on average males will be built slightly larger than females. Unlike with apes, where the sizes between the males and the females can differ a bit more. 
So as I mentioned earlier, these size differences are because of a few different reasons. Um, regional differences, climatic differences, the natural conditions, the plants and wildlife they will all have attributed greatly to the diversity of Homo erectus and its size. Homo erectus was the very first hominin to have similar limb and torso proportions, just like us modern humans, which does suggest that their bodies were much better adapted to walking upright on two feet in an open environment instead of being adapted to swing from branch to branch in the trees, like the Australopithecines. This is where Homo erectus absolutely differs with Homo habilis and the earlier Australopithecines, as these latter two had features that were more related to climbing still. The shoulders of Homo erectus seem to be much, much more modern human-like, which suggests, according to some anthropologists, the ability for high-speed throwing, like possibly spears or rocks, and then there's a weapon that I currently forgot the name of, but I will remember the name later and talk about it when I will talk about it. Might even like put that in between here, but uh. So the spine of Homo erectus seemed to have a more modern human-like curvature with five lumbar vertebrae between the rib cage and the pelvis and 12 thoracic vertebrae between the rib cage and the neck, just like us modern humans. So as you can imagine, it is unclear if Homo erectus was covered in body hair or if that was already lost before their emergence. Fossilized remains can't tell us what their skin looked like, if it was covered in hair, which color the skin was. Bones just simply cannot give us this kind of information, unfortunately. According to the genetic analysis, it is suggested that high activity in the melanocortin-1 receptor, which produces dark skin, would be dating back to some 1.2 million years ago. So it could very well be that Homo erectus started losing the hairs on the skin slowly as time went on due to the climatic conditions that changed in which it was living and developing the darker skin that would protect them against the UV radiation which is harmful, which we all know. <laughs> That's why we use sunscreen. There is a chance that the populations of Homo erectus living in higher latitudes would develop a lighter skin over time to prevent vitamin D deficiency. As someone living in Northern Europe and who's been sort of trapped under a blanket of gray clouds since September, was currently taking vitamin D supplements, I absolutely understand the need to do whatever you can to cope and maintain good levels of vitamin D because holy hell, it's not fun. So there is a Homo erectus individual discovered in Turkey who lived between 500,000 and 300,000 years ago who was diagnosed with the earliest known case of tuberculosis meningitis, which is usually seen in dark-skinned people living in higher latitudes due to vitamin D deficiency. So finds like these are absolutely incredibly important and show the regional differences that developed over time between all Homo erectus populations and communities that spread far and wide, because they did really spread far and wide. Another one of these regional differences is that in the East Asian populations, the outer layer of the bone was extraordinarily thick compared to the other populations. And in general, it seems that the outer layer of the bones were already thicker in Homo erectus than, for instance, Homo habilis or the Australopithecines. So it is unclear if this is just a genetic thing that sprung on by the climatic conditions or if this was a genetic mutation, or that the environment alone played a part in this happening. It's, it's unclear, it's not sure. So now that we know a bit of what they looked like, and how similar they were compared to modern humans, and how much they already differed from the Australopithecines, we can look into what we know about their lives. Like for instance, their social structures, the food they ate, to survive, 
I mean, that's why we eat, right? Um, <laughs> the inventions they made, like stone tools, use of fire, construction of shelters, clothes, possibly. The fact that they had to be seafarers to reach certain islands, like Java and Indonesia. The evidence that we found of them taking care of their sick and injured and even possible creation of art and rituals. This is insane. We know so much from just fossils. So there is fossilized evidence of multiple trackways found in Kenya from a group of at least 20 individuals of Homo erectus that were made some 1.5 million years ago. It seems that Homo erectus groups tended to avoid areas with a high carnivore density. These trackways do suggest hunting or foraging parties. And it seems that Homo erectus children had faster brain growth rates when compared to us modern humans. So this means that they most likely did not need to put in the same amount of maternal investment and child caring behaviors like us modern humans, where the child needs like three, four, five years of intense training and skill learning and taking care of them, keeping them alive, because wow, have you seen a child? They just try to kill themselves all the time. Of course, as you can imagine, more than this rudimentary information of their social structures is not known. Of course, it isn't much, but when you think about the fact that there isn't much to go on, it's actually quite amazing that we already know this bit of information. So when you look at the food that they ate, there is a thing of importance. The increased brain size and the possibility of a decreased gut size. So why is this important to note? Like I hear you think, why is this important? Well, a decreased gut size would play a key role into the increased brain size as the ape gut is used to synthesize fat by fermenting plant matter. And this was replaced by dietary animal fat, which would in theory allow for more energy to be diverted to the growth of the brain. And the diet of Homo erectus would be a lot more meatier with a high calorie intake, which would lead to increased brain size as well when compared to the Australopithecines and Homo habilis. Lots of sites where they found Homo erectus fossils, researchers also found medium to large game fossils, like for instance, elephants, rhinos, hippos, boars. But the diet varied a lot depending on the region of where the Homo erectus lived in. So for instance, in Israel, they ate about 55 different types of fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, and they ate amphibians, reptiles, birds, invertebrates, as well as elephants and deer. While in Kenya, alongside the elephants, rhinos, and hippos, they ate turtles, crocodiles, and catfish. And on Java in Indonesia, they most likely gathered fish and shellfish as well. So you can clearly see that they adapted to their environment and their diet changed depending on the location, which in turn could also have an effect on their regional developments, eventually resulting in distinct differences between groups and living in different areas. I mean, 1.8 million years, people, they really evolved differently in different parts of the world, but they're all still Homo erectus species. Homo erectus is credited with the invention of the Acheulean stone tools. They were the first to make lithic flakes and hand axes by facial tools like knives and cleavers. And most of these hand axes were multi-purpose tools, which were actually quite large and heavy with sharp chiseled edges that would have been used to cut meats and wood and plants multiple purpose tools, multi-purpose, purples, multi-purpose tools, purples, wow. The oldest Acheulean tools were found in Africa and are from West Turkana in Kenya, and they are 1.76 million years old, while the oldest Acheulean tools outside of Africa date to not be older than 1 million years, which is... Intriguing to note. 
On Java, we have different types of tools created by Homo erectus from shells, and there are spherical stones measuring 6 to 12 centimeters in diameter found in African and Chinese lower Paleolithic sites. These spherical stones might indicate that they were used as bolas. Bolas, I couldn't remember it earlier, but bam! It's bolas. It's also a weapon. It's also an invention from them, which is a type of throwing weapon used with two spherical stones as weights on the end of interconnected cords that were used to catch animals by entangling their legs, making it impossible for them to escape and run away. Kind of cruel, but very sneaky. If these were indeed used as bolas, this would highly suggest that Homo erectus had string and cordage technology as well. It's believed that Homo erectus was the first hominin to have used fire, although it is unclear when this occurred. This is due to the fact that evidence of campfires is very rare and usually extremely poorly preserved, especially over long periods of times, like hundreds of thousands or even millions of years. It's just impossible for us to exactly know. But the oldest known fire sites that we do know are in Kenya and in South Africa. And these date from 1.7 million years and 1.5 million years ago. These fire sites are believed to have been created by transporting naturally occurring fire into caves and maintaining these naturally occurring fires for as long as possible or sporadically when the opportunity arose. Maintaining a fire would have required the knowledge of using animal dung and it's not necessarily believed that this was done already at the start of them using fire for the first time or if they would develop this skill over time and learn this technique to maintain their fires for a longer period of time. The oldest known hearths in recorded history are found in Israel and date from approximately 700,000 years ago. It's found in multiple layers of sediments in an area close to water, which are both very unusual characteristics of naturally occurring fire and indicate the creation and maintaining of a hearth. Around 400,000 years ago, fire becomes more widely used globally by Homo erectus, most likely because the invention of how to start fire was lost and reinvented multiple times and happened in multiple different locations on the globe and by different communities, not because it was invented in one place and slowly spread over the globe. That's just not, that's not how things work. <laughs> Historians believe that because of the widespread use of fire and creating artificial light, the communities would start to socialize around the fire. And this is believed where the emergence of language started, just all around these fires. So this is due to the fact that apes were awake from sunrise to sunset. And with artificial light, Homo erectus would lengthen the time of them being awake, which gave them more time to develop social skills that are actually quite important when you look at our current society. We do need social skills. Now it's time to look into the possible construction of shelters by the hand of Homo erectus. In 1960... <laughs> In 1962, a circle made of volcanic rocks was found in the Olduvai Gorge in Tanzania. Piles of rock of up to 23 centimeters in height were found and British paleoanthropologist Mary Leakey suggested that these piles of rock could have been used to support poles that were stuck in the ground for a simple hut or a windbreaker. This dates back to approximately 1.75 million years ago. And this is the oldest claimed evidence for architecture. 1.75 million years ago. Wow. These same building techniques are actually still used by nomadic tribes living in modern day Africa, building low lying rock walls that would support branches or poles, which were then covered in grass or animal skin. So what do we know about Homo erectus when it comes to clothing? As you can imagine, the invention of the wearing of clothes is very unclear. And it's sort of believed by historians that some 3 million years ago, the first pieces of clothing 
would have started to be used to compensate for the lack of body hair, which would have kept the body warm naturally. The oldest known uses of animal hides that could have been used for clothing and the oldest known hide scrapers date back to approximately 780,000 years ago. Although it's unclear if this was used for clothing in particular or for their shelters, so we can't really be sure unless we have a time machine. A time machine, hmm. Seriously, where's Doc when you need him? I just need to get back to the future already. Look, fix it. I need a flux capacitor. I'm such a nerd. God. <clears throat> okay. Next up, we have the possible invention of seafaring. This is thought to be another Homo erectus invention due to the fact that Acheulean artifacts dating to approximately 1 million years ago have been discovered on isolated islands that were not connected to the mainland in the Pleistocene. So the only way to reach those islands was by the use of rafts because there was no other way to reach the islands of Flores, Timor and Java in Indonesia at that time. It's just not possible, unless they teleported. Did Homo erectus teleported? Was Graham Hancock right? Things older? Homo erectus might have also crossed the Strait of Gibraltar between Morocco and Spain, making them the first European mariners as well. There is some evidence that suggests that Homo erectus actually took care of their sick. One of these examples is the discovery of a skull dating from approximately 1.77 million years ago that lost all but one tooth, either due to age or gum disease. But this individual seemed to have survived for quite some time after they lost their teeth. They probably ate soft plant materials and animals with the assistance of members of the community as they were unable to chew for themselves. This now makes me think of like a mom that's chewing on something and then taking it out of her mouth and giving it to the kitten. Like every time I see that, I'm just grossed out. I just can't help it. I cannot help it. The idea that someone pre-chewed something of, like food before me and then puts it in my mouth just makes me want to gag. Ugh. Not for me. I'd rather die. Sorry. Just saying it. I'm weird. We understand. I'm just weird. So there's also the fossilized remains of an individual known as Turkana boy dating from 1.5 million years ago that had juvenile spile disc herniation. And as the boy grew larger, this resulted in scoliosis, which most likely restricted the boy in his walking and other daily activities. But yet <laughs> he survived into adolescence, which suggests that there was an advanced form of care in his community because he managed to survive, even though he would have probably been in a lot of pain constantly. So now we've reached the point where we look into the created art and possible rituals from Homo erectus. This is one of the things that I'm very interested in. Again, not too much information is known, but we can look at what we do know. I do personally believe that this is connected to the creation of fire and the lengthening of their waking time, which gave them the ability to develop these things like social skills and art, which suggests the ability of symbolic thinking. There's a shell found on the island of Java in Indonesia. It's a pseudodon shell, which is a fossilized freshwater shell that has zigzag engravings that date back to between 546,000 and 436,000 years ago. And this is possibly the earliest evidence of art. There's also an ox rib that was found in France, which had engraved lines on it that look similar to a meander design that's been found in modern human upper paleolithic cave art. And then there are ostrich eggshell beads discovered in northwestern Africa. And these are the earliest disc shaped beads ever found. And they were found with a number of Acheulean lithics. And beads similar to these have been found in France and Israel as well. So that's already awesome. But then there is the Venus of Tantan artifact found in Morocco and the Venus of Berakat Ram artifact found in Israel. And these could be the oldest representations of the human form, predating the Venus of Holofels, as you can imagine. Homo erectus most likely 
collected red colored pigments like ochre on purpose as many of these lumps were discovered in Tanzania dating to approximately 1.4 million years ago and they were found with the skull cap of a hominid most likely a homo erectus it wasn't clear I tried to find which kind of hominin but yeah some lumps were discovered in Spain as well at Ambrona, which is a paleontological and archaeological site, and these ochres date back to approximately 424,000 years ago. It's unclear if they used the ochre for any practical applications, but these collections seem to indicate that Homo erectus had a sense for aesthetics, as later human species like the Neanderthals and Homo sapiens used ochre as body paint, although it's not known if Homo erectus did this as well. What is also unclear is the possibility of Homo erectus developing and using language. The part of the brain that we modern humans use for language seems to have been present in Homo erectus and the hyoid bone is similar to all other Homo species, including ours. For those who don't know, the hyoid bone is a horseshoe shaped bone and it's situated between the chin and the thyroid cartilage it's sort of the bone that supports the tongue, which makes it possible to control the vocal tract when it comes to pitch and volume. And it's why I'm very annoying and do whatever it is that I do when I talk way too much, as per usual. It does seem that in Homo heidelbergensis, this bone looks mostly similar to us modern humans. And therefore we can almost say with certainty that Homo heidelbergensis had a proto-language. It's just not as clear with Homo erectus, so for now we cannot be sure. Homo erectus... No, ho homie? Homie? <laughs> Homo erectus has been credited with the longest reign of any of the other species in the Homo genus. It's actually quite insane how long they've been around for. They emerged around 1.8 million years ago, and the youngest fossils of Homo erectus date to between 117,000 and 108,000 years ago. So that's a reign of like 1.7 million years long? Well, during the reign of Homo erectus, we had Homo heidelbergensis emerge. We had Homo neanderthalensis emerge. We saw the Denisovans and Homo longi, and even us, Homo sapiens, emerge. And Homo erectus was still going strong all this time. Of course, it is unclear why Homo erectus disappeared, just like it's unclear why any of the other species in the Homo genus disappeared. It's not really known. It is possible that Homo heidelbergensis, Homo neanderthalensis, Denisovans and Homo longi eventually replaced Homo erectus in Africa and Europe and Eurasia as the youngest fossils of Homo erectus are found on the island of Java in Indonesia. They might have survived there the longest due to less competition from the other Homo species. Homo sapiens only came to the island around 70,000 years ago, they think. Climate change may have also attributed to the disappearance of Homo erectus as well. They could have possibly adapted less good to the ever-changing climate and after nearly 2 million years of constant adaptations to their environment, they might have just come to a point of no longer being able to change. It's not a weird thought. Homo erectus is most likely the most important species in the human evolutionary tree of life and without a doubt it's one of the most iconic species that eventually led into the evolution of us, Homo sapiens, modern humans. They managed to survive for nearly two million years on a planet that changed drastically with new species slowly overtaking their habitat animals going extinct due to being hunted and the climate that kept changing. We've now seen how important Homo erectus really was in the development of many skills. The intelligence of Neanderthals that I spoke about a while ago started all the way back with Homo erectus and it shows that we Homo sapiens or modern humans are just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to intelligence and social skills and evolution. 
were just the latest part of, an, of a story that well, goes back millions of years. And also, yes, yes, I do expect many funny comments on this video. I've now made quite the collection of videos using certain words, and I'm just praying that someone is not going to make a weird edit one day. And now I'm kind of annoyed with myself that I even say this because now you have the chance that someone will do it. Why am I like this? But yeah, with that said, if you enjoyed watching, then don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you'd like to see more of these kind of videos and click that bell icon if you want to be notified every time I upload because it's becoming sporadic and sometimes I upload a lot and sometimes I don't upload much and take like six or seven days for a video, like this long one. Hi. It was fun researching this one and reading so much. And like I said, I will create another video about the different lineages, species, possible different species, but they're usually just seen as Homo erectus differences, regional differences, lineages whatever you want to call it. Um, if you haven't seen any of my previous videos yet, or you've seen a couple, but you want to watch more, then click the card in the upper right corner. Uh, links in the description down below will give, point you to other videos and my sources that I used for the creation of this video. I also put videos in the end card for you to click on if you're unsure what it is that you want to watch. I would like to say a massive, massive thank you to everyone supporting me and my work and the channel. Um, I don't really ask for Patreons and channel members. I'm just grateful for everyone supporting me. I saw that a couple of Patreons left. Some people let, told me that they don't like the fact that I stopped saying the names, but it's just taking too much out of my day to keep track of all that. And for me, it's not about names. It, for me, it's about history and what I can research for you and what I can bring to the table to present to you. So if you did support me just for me to say your name, then I'm sorry. And I didn't mean to disrespect you or anyone else, but I just, I can't keep up with that. It's too much for me and I'm sorry. Um, yeah, I said homie erectus a couple dozen times. <laughs> Why am I like this? Like homeo sapiens and homie erectus, he's my homie. <laughs> it's just bad. I, 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 I sort of suck at this, all of this. But yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. That hopefully is not going to be like this beast of a video of 30 minutes in length. I'm already tired and fatigued and I still need to edit. But yeah, love y'all. Bye. <laughs> to the diversity of homo erectus and its size ha 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 multiple purpose tools multi purpose purples multi purpose tools purples wow <laughs>